What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp free tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to work with materials inside of the free online version of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this video is a continuation of my getting started with SketchUp free series. I will link to the entire playlist of SketchUp free videos in the notes down below so that you can follow along from the beginning if you'd like to. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to apply materials and some of the different uh, things that you need to know when working with materials inside of SketchUp Free. And so to start off, you can find materials by going over to this button right here that says materials. What that's going to do is that's going to pop up um, a little window that allows you to select and edit the materials inside of your model. So it's going to look something like this. If you have materials in your model, this will look a little bit different. But basically what this window allows you to do is it allows you to, if you click on the little house, it allows you to see the materials contained inside different things in your model. And then on the right hand side, it allows you to access the material library contained inside of SketchUp Free. So we'll talk a little bit more about this in a second, but let's finish going through this. This button will purge the unused materials, meaning if you have a whole bunch of materials you're not using anymore, it'll remove them from the end model section. Then you can also adjust the way that you see these materials. So as a general rule, I pretty much always use the thumbnail view, but you can kind of do whatever you want. But to start off, let's talk a little bit about how to apply different materials inside of SketchUp. So in SketchUp, every one of these objects is a face. And so if you click on the face and you go up into the entity info, so that's going to be right here at the top of the page, you can see how each one of these faces has a front side and a back side, and each one of those has a material listed. In this situation, all of the materials that are, or all of the faces that I have in this model have the default material applied, which is just this black and gray, or this uh, white and gray color. And so the back material is darker because that's the back side of the face. The front material is lighter, um, but those are both the default material. And I'm not going to get too far into the front and back side of faces. Just note that faces inside of SketchUp do have a front side and a back side. But in this situation, let's say that I wanted to apply a material to my ground right here. Well, what I could do is I could browse and I could go down to colors and I could apply, let's say like a green color to my ground. So I could come in here and I could apply a green color to this ground. And so there's two kinds of materials inside of SketchUp Free. There's colors and then there's textures. So what we've done here is we've applied a color to the ground right here. We could also come in and maybe apply like a gray material to our roof. You can see how you can click on a material and then click on a face or an object in order to apply that material. And it looks like my ground inside of my house is also turning green, which I don't necessarily want. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just going to cut this material out. And so because we have two different kinds of materials in here, you can either apply a color or you can apply a texture. So in this situation, let's say instead of having a green color in here with no image associated with it, we were to come in here and click on the button for landscaping, fencing, and vegetation. And as we scroll down, you're gonna notice that there's actually materials in here for things like grass. So if I was to click on grass and click on the ground right here, you're gonna notice that what this does is this actually applies an image of grass to this face. So while this is just a color, this has a repeating image covering the ground that basically allows me to use a photo as a material. And so as a general rule, these are gonna be more realistic than just applying colors, but you can apply either one of those inside of your model. So in this situation, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply this material right here as well. And so one thing to point out is now, if I was to come in here and I was to click on this face and look at the entity info, you're gonna see that this face has a grass dark green material associated with the front face. So there's nothing applied to the back face. So if I was to rotate down, you can see how there's nothing on this face right here. It's all been applied to this face right here. If you ever wanna take something back to the default material, so if you wanna get rid of a material that's applied to this, you can just go into the entity info after selecting your object, you can click on the little X right here and it's gonna ask if I wanna assign the default material to the selected entities. And I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. 
So you can see how when I do that, you can use that to remove materials as well as add them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this grass material back right here. And let's go through and add some more materials. So one thing I wanna point out is not only do these materials have the option of having a color or an image associated with them. So the image is the tiled image, and that's gonna be your textures. They also have some other settings you can adjust. So let's say for example, that we wanted to edit this window. And what I've done is I've modeled this so that the um, the gray on the outside, which would be the aluminum, would be on the outside, and then I have a raw face on the inside that isn't grouped um, that's going to make up my glass material. And so if I was to click on this button right here and scroll down and look at the glass and mirrors, what you're gonna notice is if I was to apply the glass and mirror material in here, you can see I can actually see through this. And so the reason I can see through this is because this material is translucent, meaning it allows light through the material. So if I was to rotate into this house, you can see how this material right here allows me to see through this out this window. So you can apply these uh, transparent materials to faces. Um, you can find some of them in the glass, the glass and mirrors section, but you can also go into your colors. And let's say I wanted something that has maybe a little bit more of a, we'll say like this lighter purple tint or something like that. I could apply this material to this face, but then I can edit that to add transparency or translucency to this material. So the way that would work is if I was to click on the in model section and I was to go find this color right here. So it's gonna be this color right here and click on it. So this is the list of the materials in your model and I went and found the purple material that's in there. I can click on this button right here to edit that material. Well, when I edit that material, I can change things like the name of the material, the color of the material, or the opacity of the material. So notice, if I was to drag this down, and then rotate around, and you kind of need to save the settings in order for this to work, but let's say I give this an opacity of 35%, and then I clicked on Done, what that would do is that would save the change to this material. Well, now this material is a transparent material and I can actually see through it. So you can actually create transparent materials in this way. So another thing I wanna talk about really quick is I wanna talk about the way that materials are applied to raw faces as opposed to the way they're applied to groups. So right now, for example, what we did before is our ground, if you click on it, you can see how this face is selected, meaning the actual face geometry inside of my model is selected. But we talked in the last video about how to group geometry. So for example, if I click on this house right here, you can see how I get this blue box around it. Well, the reason I have this blue box around it is because this is all grouped geometry. What that means is if I was to double click in here and then click on a face, you can see how all of this individual geometry has been placed in a group. Well, that's going to affect the way that our materials are going to look. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to add like a siding to the outside of our house. Well, if I was to double click in here and just click and just apply a material to one of these faces. So if I was to, for example, click on, we'll go with this siding material right here for now. And I was to click on this face, you can see how this applies this material to one face at a time. Right, So I could go through and I could add a material to each one of these faces just by clicking on them. Um, however, there's a faster way to do this, which is if you have a group of geometry like this and you apply the material to the outside of the group, you can see how everything in the group gets the material applied to it. So instead of me going through and applying this material to every single face, what I did is I just applied this to the outside of the group. And if we were to look at our entity info, notice that when I click on this, it tells me that I have a group in the model selected and it has a material applied to it. So you can either do this by applying materials to the outside of groups as a whole or individually. Now the problem with this you need to pay attention to is notice that the floor, for example, was inside of this group. And so what's happened is this siding material has now been applied to the inside of all of my objects as well, which we don't necessarily want because we wouldn't have siding on the inside of our house. So this can be very powerful, 
but you need to be a little bit careful. So I'm just gonna take this back to the default model. And in this situation, we're just gonna apply this to the individual faces. However, now I'll show you an example of a time when you would want to apply it to the outside of the group. And so that's gonna be my window. So if you remember, my window has a raw face right here, but then it also has all of this geometry around the outside in a group. So you can see if I was to double click again, I could get in here and adjust the raw geometry, but I don't want that. I want to be on the outside of this group right here. Well, now what I can do is I can go through and I can find a gray color like this one, or maybe this one, and apply it to the outside of this group and it'll get applied to everything in this group. So instead of me having to go through and select all of these different faces and apply this to these individually, I can just apply it to the outside of this overall group. And so another thing I wanna point out is when you do place materials on faces like this one, on raw faces, you can adjust the way those materials sit on those faces. So the way that would work is, let's say I wanted to add a roof to this object. So I wanted to add a roof, like a shingle material or something like that. Well, I could click on the roofing tab and I can click on this and I can apply a material to the roof, right? Just by clicking on this face. Well, let's say I wanted this roof material to be a little bit bigger. Well, there's two different ways that you can do that. So the first is you could click on this button right here for in model and you could edit this material and for something that has a texture applied to it, I can actually adjust the width and the height of the texture that's been applied right here. So let's say, for example, I wanted these to be a little bit bigger. Well, I could just tell this, I want this image to tile, um, tile these as if they were four foot by four foot instead of three foot by three foot. So you can see how I can come in here and I can adjust that and the size of my material is going to adjust as well. And so notice that right now, this little, um, this little chain is shown as unbroken. What that means is this maintains the aspect ratio of the image. Because if I was to, for example, unlock this, and then I was to change my width to something like 10 feet, but I was to leave the other one at five feet, you can see how this distorts my image by stretching it. And so by leaving that locked, you can set this to maintain these so that you don't get any kind of distortion in here. And so once I've done that, I can select that material from in model and I can apply it to my roof over here as well. And so the other thing that we can also do with this is if you apply a material to a raw face, so let's say for example that we were to go into our landscaping, fencing, and vegetation, there's a couple different fencing objects that you can place in here. So for example, this object, will place a fence on this face. So it has transparency built into the image. So you could also do something like this rough wood, just like this, or maybe this gate material. So this is probably the best example of this. So when I apply this material to this face, you can see how I'm getting tiling in here. Well, the reason I'm getting tiling in here is because the image isn't tall enough to fit on this face. So what's happening is this places this image inside of this object, but then it also tiles it um, because it repeats it because this is a repeating image on this face. Well, what we can do is we can click on this raw face and note this only works on raw faces. This isn't gonna work on geometry that's inside of a group. But what you can do is you can right click on this material if you scroll down, you can see how there's gonna be an option for position texture. So what I can do is I can use SketchUp's texture positioning tools in order to position this object on this face. And notice when you do this, what this does is this pops up these four little push pins. What these push pins are is these are pins that allow you to adjust where your material sits. So in this situation, for example, I can click and drag this in order to place this texture somewhere else on this face. And you can also move the pins. So for example, I can single click on a pin to pick it up and move it, and I could place that somewhere else. So I could place that on this point right here. I could place that on this point right here. But what this red one does is it allows me to move my texture. So I wanna pick this lower left-hand corner point, 
and drag this over so that it aligns with the bottom corner of my model. And then we're not gonna focus too much on these two right now, we're gonna focus on this green one. What the green one does is this allows me to resize or rescale my texture. So you can see how when I do this, I can use this to resize this so this texture actually fits on this face. So now, if I was to right click and click on the button for done, you can see how now this texture fits nicely on this face. So now we're gonna go find that material and we're gonna apply it to this face as well. We're gonna have to do the same thing. So we're just gonna have to come in here to right click on this, position our texture and click and drag this over here. And I think actually, I'm gonna go ahead and size this properly and click on done, but then I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna click the button for make unique texture. So when I do that, what you're gonna notice is this actually creates a copy of this texture right here. So it takes the texture that we've uh, adjusted and it creates it it creates it as its own texture inside of SketchUp, so separate from the one that we had in here before. Well now, if I apply this one, you can see how it matches a lot better along the height of this face. So while this one is our old texture, we can click on that and you can see how the sizing is not right. If we click on our new one that got created in here, you can see how the sizing is correct. So you can see how that material works a whole lot better with this fence. And so the last thing I wanna talk about is you can also, by creating a unique texture, you can, or you can actually create your own textures using images from your computer. So the way that you can do this is I'm gonna go ahead and pick a color. It doesn't really matter which one in this case. And I'm just going to apply it to this face. Well then, I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna edit this material. Well, when I edit this material, what I can do is you're gonna notice there's a little button right here for texture. Well, you can click on this button and you can drag an image in of a texture that you wanna use. So in this situation, I have a concrete material that I'm going to drag in here. So I'm just going to take this material, drag it over, and place it right here. And you can click on the button for Use Image. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to upload your image into SketchUp, and it's going to add it to your material library. And so now, if you edit this material, well, first, if you look at this material, you can see how it's actually tiling the image that I brought in here. And so in this situation, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a lot bigger. So I'm just gonna adjust this so that maybe it has like a five foot width associated with it. And notice that the bigger these image files are, the longer this is going to take to load. So for example, um, because this is a larger, more high resolution image file, this takes longer to run in my web browser. So that is something to be aware of is don't upload super high resolution images in this situation. But I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 10 feet. I'm just gonna tap the tab key. This is going to automatically adjust the size. And then I'm gonna click on done. And so you can also, by clicking on the edit button right here, you can also adjust the color of this a little bit. And you have to be a little careful with this, but if you click on this colorize button, you can see how you're gonna be able to actually adjust the color of the material using your color picker. So if you want this to be a little lighter or a little more gray or something like that, you can use the color picker in order to do that. So that should give you a pretty good idea of the way the materials work inside of SketchUp free. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you know all this was in here? Have you been using this tool? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.